Alright, what is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, Ice Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is a match preview of Chelsea's game at home against Crystal Palace in the Premier League. A London derby, the return of Gary Cahill. Just a bit of narrative for you there to add to what is quite an important game for Chelsea because things go their way this weekend, they can see themselves go third, even second. Whoa. It's going to be a very different test to Ajax. It's going to be Roy Hodgson, very stern, defensive, you know, canny football. He's a smooth operator, old Roy Hodgson, and he will not basically let Chelsea slap him about. So it's going to be a tough game, and Chelsea obviously have Jorginho suspended, which is a bit of a problem for them, but, you know, it was better he was suspended for Palace than the Manchester City game, so I get it. And Mason Mount obviously came off injured against Ajax. Whether there'll be a problem for starting this game or not, we have to see if Frank selects him. Anyway, before we get into the match preview, a quick reminder to you there to subscribe to Football Therapy and click the bell notifications icon so you don't miss out on any of this daily Chelsea Football Club content. Oh yeah, and why not like the video to help out your boy? Yeah, so like I said in the intro, Big game, last game before the international break. And by the way, five Chelsea players have been called up for England. That's pretty dope. You got Ross Barkley, who seems to turn into like prime Iniesta for England and it just doesn't play very well for Chelsea. And you got the other boys that were called up with him before in Tammy, Fick, and Mason. Callum Hudson Adoy comes in to make the fifth. Lovely scenes. I think that must be the most called up players from one team, I guess. It must be. Anyway, Crystal Palace Premier League preview. Huge game, and obviously a big talking point is Gary Cahill, the, the boys coming home. You know what? He's been an excellent signing for Crystal Palace. He sorted them out completely. Arsenal are looking like they got the wrong player. I get why they wanted David Luiz. They wanted the sort of cultured, technical footballer who can play long balls to like Aubameyang, Lacazette, and now Pepe. But in terms of shoring up a defence, they should have called Gary Cahill. I'm happy he went to Palace and not Arsenal, but hopefully he should be really well received at Stamford Bridge. Let's talk a little bit about how this game might go and open that analysis screen. Right there, next to me is the lineup and formation old Wibbly Wobbly Wory <laughs> sent out last time in the Premier League when they lost 2 0 against Leicester. As you can see, this is a 4 5 1, a very resolute pragmatic formation but it actually turns into a 4-4-2 with Wilfred Zaha joining Ayu up in attack. Palace will look to be hard to break down and obviously they'll try and break on Chelsea with Wilfred Zaha who would probably be hoping to join Chelsea soon and Ayu running on as people like that. Remember Van Aanholt ex-Chelsea as well he's a pacey operator that can get down the flank and they will have a threat on the break and when they do have possession and they're playing forwards they'll look to play Zaha in around the penalty area and they'll look for naive defending from any opposition for him to try and win a penalty for Milivojevic to convert every single time. It's often works for them and they'll be looking to do that again. And you know what? Chelsea definitely can do some naive defending. Hodgson will be rubbing his hands together at this prospect and that will probably be one of their main forms of attack as well as putting in set pieces, trying to score goals in that way. And you can almost smell the narrative of goal scoring centre back Gary Cahill getting on the end of a set piece, a corner or a free kick and putting one away against Chelsea. It's just the way, isn't it? So that's what you can expect from Palace, a kind of pragmatic, counter-attacking, set piece, advantage taking kind of vibe, especially away from home. They'll be resolute though, they'll be hard to break down and like the aforementioned fact that I've said already twice in this video, there'll be a completely different prospect to Ajax. And Chelsea need to be ready for that. So let's switch the graphics to a potential Chelsea lineup. The Tinker Man 2.0 Frank Lampard seems to have stopped tinkering. It did look like he went to a 4-4-2 diamond at the end of that Ajax game, but that was a very special situation. Chelsea were playing against nine men at home and they very much could have won that game and taken all three points. But expect Frank Lampard to play the 4-2-3-1 slash 4-4-3, depending on shape at this game. Frank Lampard's formation does shift a lot. I've spoken about this a few times. Actually, out of possession, it does turn into a 4-4-2 when defending, where an attacking mid or the cam joins the striker to help press in unison. Thing is with pressing, you don't just have the striker running around chasing the ball. You have to press as a team and you've got to look for triggers. It's really interesting. I might do another video on it at one point. But because of Jorginho being suspended and maybe Mason Mount not being ready, 
Frank Lampard can play a 4 2 3 1 with Hudson Adore on the left, Willian on the right, Pulisic in the 10 behind Tammy Abraham, and then he can have the deep midfield two of Kante and Kovacic. Kovacic can play the more Jorginho style role because he played Regista under Sari when Jorginho was out, and he's got a good range of passing, and it lets Kante do the more roaming, destroying, dribbling role, linking up with attack, which we know Kante can do very, very well. Kante suits the right centre mid a lot more, so maybe Frank will play a conventional 4-3-3, play Kovacic as the deep pivot like he did under Sari when Jorginho was out, Kente right centre mid like he played under Sari, and left centre mid could be Mason Mount, or maybe, maybe even Pulisic does drop into there if Mount's still injured, and that'll be an interesting situation. I think, also, we might see Billy Gilmore start in this game, uh, if not in the number 10, maybe left centre mid, he, you know, Frank obviously trusts him, he's giving him, he's given him his Premier League debut already, and he started him against Manchester United in the Cup, so he obviously fancies him, maybe in a home game against Crystal Palace, due to injuries, he might start him, and also Billy Gilmore did tweet out something about him training you know with star eyes emojis which sometimes makes you think oh he might be playing so that'll be interesting it'll be either a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3 with perhaps different personnel in no matter what frank says about injuries and stuff he he like many managers doesn't want to put all his cards on the table before match day to give you know a canny operator like roy hodgson too much information. All right, then we talked about potential lineups and personnel and formations and stuff. So let's get rid of the analysis screen. Right then, what do we think? Well, it's going to be difficult. Frank's a little bit hamstrung in terms of injuries or suspensions. And also fatigue might be starting to settle in with the Chelsea players a little bit. They've been playing a lot recently. They've been playing cup games, a lot of Champions League games. And remember, Frank Lampard's football is pretty high octane stuff and it can drain the players. I know they're young and they feel like they can go every couple of days, but they could you know, be telling quite soon. Exciting news as well, as we find out probably in a few days to a couple of weeks, how the appeal went with, with Cass and if Frank Lampard can bring some new players in. Because I don't think we're likely to see Pedro and Giroud play again for Chelsea unless it's off the bench and it's a bit of an emergency. It would be really nice to see Reese James start in this game. Maybe Azpilicueta start a left back, but hopefully, you know, Emerson's coming back in to show his pace and, you know, we all had issues watching Marcus Alonso in the Champions League before he got hooked at half time. So hopefully Frank's learned from that and we see some more dynamism from the full back position. So, you know, I say dynamism from Aspi at left back, but a little bit more assured. But it would be super nice to see the starting full back combination of Emerson and Rhys James on both flanks. If Crystal Palace do get boxed into their own defensive third, which is kind of highly likely in this game, Chelsea will look for the creative players to unpick the lock. And we're talking about your Kristen Pulisics and people like that. And remember, Callum hudson Adoy is still hunting for that Premier League goal. Starts at home, say he didn't start in the Champions League, so he could absolutely start at home in this game. It will be not the onus on him to score, but him to be creative, be, you know, need to make another assist or two. And maybe, maybe get that goal and get him off the mark for the season and give the lad a bit of confidence. You'll be a fool to back against Tammy scoring a goal in this kind of game. So hopefully Tammy Abraham gets on the score sheet. And I personally would love N'Golo Kante to score yet another Premier League goal if he starts. Because like I said, he's a midfielder that plays under Frank Lampard and he's been given the license to do so. Well to roam forward and try and score. So that would be lovely scenes. Anyway, I'm going to give a score prediction for this game and tell you how I think it's going to go. I think Roy Hodgson is a canny operator and I can see Palace getting a goal. I think Chelsea are going to... It was going to be difficult for long periods of the game, but I think Chelsea, I'm going to be confident here and say 3-1 win to Chelsea. That's no disrespect to Palace. I think they absolutely will stay in the Premier League under Roy Hodgson again because he makes them a very sort of defensively sound side but at home with the current spirits with four points recently taken off Ajax with the comeback with the hopefully better personnel at the back I see Chelsea doing it and by two goals to the good so I say 3-1 maybe 2-0 and if a shutout would be lovely as well anyway I want to hear all your guys thoughts and opinions get down in the comments below let me know your score predictions who you think is going to play how you think the game is going to go I want to hear it get down in the comments remember if you've liked the content today please do like 
like the video and if you want to join the uh, discord server for football therapy you are welcome to the link is in the patreon uh yeah, your link is in the description via Patreon. See, English is easy, man. And you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick. That's on Instagram and Twitter. And you know what? I want to remind you guys, all of you still watching this video, please do subscribe to Yan Plays, my sister channel, where I play video games and it's a lot of fun. Come check it out, Yan Plays. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, that's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby